Hey everybody, Merry Christmas and welcome to Windows to Heaven Art Studio. I'm your host Stephen Cooley and for this video I want to paint a picture of a very high up snowy mountain range where it feels like the viewer is standing on the mountains overlooking a vast snowy mountain landscape. So I'm talking about really, really high up. And inspiration for this painting is actually in the item description of the prints for this painting, which I hope to list you know, pretty soon here, on my website, which is windows to have an art .etsy .com. That's windows to have an art .etsy .com. There's a link in the about section of this channel. You, you click on the link and it'll take you directly to the website. So if you want to read about um, what inspired this painting, you can go and look up item description. So yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are painting with a bigger canvas. This one is a 24 by 30 inch canvas. And I chose a larger size for this painting because the painting is of a grand mountain range and it's supposed to exude vastness. So I chose a larger canvas. So. Yeah, bigger canvas, and you can see that I'm starting out doing a sketch here with some blue oil paint. And I think that's a filbert brush I have. And when I'm doing sketches, I think I've said this before, but they're pretty loose and subject to a lot of change. This is just to give me an idea of the direction that I want to go with the painting. So generally, this is what it's going to look like. And you can see me wiping some of the paint off there with a blue shop towel. Those are very nice to be able to use with oil paints. And now I'm applying a sky to the background of the painting. And I'm simply using white paint and blue paint, kind of mixing it together so that most of the white paint is centered towards the horizon to give it kind of a hazy effect while it fades up into more of a light blue towards the, the top of the canvas. And because the mountains are going to be the focal point of this painting, I want the sky to complement them rather than be, you know, so detailed that they detract from the mountains. So I'm, I'm just painting some loose background clouds into the sky that won't distract the viewer from the subject matter, which is the mountains. You can see me adding in some blue paint there just to kind of give some cloud suggestions in the background. So easy to do. Um, mine just went longer because I'm so picky with my painting that something as simple as a as a sky like that took a while, so it's really not that hard, in other words. And remember, if you like these paintings and you want to purchase one for your wall, you can go to my website where I have paintings like this and others that I've done here on my channel for sale in canvas prints. Um, I'm also putting up some originals as well and as of the date that this video is put out, December of 2020, they're on sale so make sure to check that out. You can see I'm putting a very distant mountain in the background and I remember when I was putting it in, it was a little too dark, so I just added a little bit of white paint and kind of worked with it until it was almost barely visible, I guess you could say. So that's what I'm doing there.
Now I'm taking a darker paint, which was kind of like a darker blue mixed with some gray. I'm using that to put in a closer mountain there. And I'm being careful to keep the edges nice and crisp. And the light in this picture is coming in from the top right. So the left side of the mountain range here is going to be dark. That's why I'm painting it a little bit darker there. Whereas the right side is going to be very light colored. Because I want this to be a very bright painting where the sun is shining in full force on the snow. So that's why it's going to be kind of darker on the left side there. And there is a paint for the main peak, which is going to be closer, obviously, than the other one. So it's a little bit darker, a little bit more black in that dark blue color. And I'm just outlining the peak. And at this point, it's nice to keep in mind, especially with oil paint, that if I don't like the shape of it, it's pretty easy to go and change. And also, when I'm painting this mountain in here, it's a good thing to note that um, the dark the dark gray there that I'm using is going to be the rock. And I'm going to use kind of a, a blue color for the shadowed snow. And there's going to be a lot of snow coming up that ridge there, so I don't need to paint the whole thing, obviously, with that dark gray color. And you notice that I put that blue shop towel on a little earlier over it. That's just because I was wiping away, yep, you see right there, wiping away some of the oil paint so that it remains a thin layer because I don't want it to start getting so piled up that it turns into mud. Now, a painting like this is pretty straightforward because there's not a lot of elements in the painting. You basically just got sky, rock, and snow. And you throw it all together um, with a variety of different colors. Mostly gonna, it's mostly going to be blues and grays and white. But you can get creative. I threw in some browns as well later on, but a painting like this I think is it's kind of deceptive because you'd think it would be super easy because there's not a you know a lot going on. It's just mountains, right? But it really teaches you when you take on a painting like this, it teaches you depth, it teaches you how to do shadows, it teaches you highlighting. It's a really good painting to take on if you want to get into honing your painting skills in these areas because you really have to focus on those areas. There I am highlighting the snow where the sun is hitting it and you can see I'm not going all the way up with the snow onto the top of the peak because of the shape of the peak there. Snow isn't going to collect very deep up on you know the, the tip of the peak so that's why I left it thin you know and had it fade out as I went up and here I'm working on the foreground and I want to make this particular area here that I'm working on really close up so yeah I wanted to like add something there to give a little perspective and so I just decided to put in a part of the rock where it's coming up out of the snow and so I'm gonna, you know, work on that a little bit later and make it look closer. Right there, I'm putting in some snow highlighting on that more distant peak, keeping in mind where the light is coming from. Remember the top right side of the canvas. So I'm just imagining where the sunlight is gonna be hitting the snow.
super fun doing a painting like this. It's really fun to imagine as you go. Because even though I had a sketch, I didn't foresee that it would end up looking even the way it does now. There's a lot of changes that happen. And it's really fun to explore those changes as you go along. Now I'm starting to work on the part of that distant slope where it kind of dips down there. And the viewer knows as much as I do at this point what it's going to look like. You notice too that I'm making the paint lighter as I get farther away. So that's why it's a very, very light gray-blue as opposed to darker as you get closer. And right about this point in the painting, I noticed that the slope of that rock that I'm working on right there was the same as the slope further back. Their angles were the same, so I wanted to change that, and that's what I'm doing there. I'm making it a little steeper, coming down at a, a steeper angle. That's just because you want to break things up in your painting. You don't want to have a lot of similitudes or similarities with things in your painting. And that helps bring in interest to the painting because the viewer doesn't know what to expect when he's looking at, at your painting anymore. And there I'm taking some blue and I'm sticking it in the snow to add texture and shape to the slope and to the, you know, the waves of the snow. And that's just, I mean, you just play around with it until you get something you like, not too hard. But that's how you shadow and shape your snow is basically just with white and blue. The blue paint being the shadow and the white being the highlights of the snow. And also, as a side note, if you look back at the point of the rock, of the nearest peak there, that's jutting out, I brought that a little higher up and I made that more pronounced. I don't know if you can see it right there. And I lowered the ridge line of the mountain behind it just a little bit. And that's just because as I was looking at it, it hit me a little weird just because the ridge of the mountain behind it was at the pretty much the exact same level as that part of the, the peak in front of it. So I just changed it up a little bit. Basically for the same reasons as I was just talking about with the angle of the slope. Now I'm taking some lighter brown and I'm highlighting the rock, giving it sort of a warmer color, which is a nice contrast to the otherwise cold colors of the rest of the painting. And that's one thing that I really, really like about painting. It makes sense. It's logical. I'm not going to put that highlight of that brown on the opposite side of the rock because the light isn't making it stand out there. It's, it's shadowed there. It's not going to be highlighted. So the light source is your map to how your painting should look. And when you follow it, it it's, it's like it just it helps you to know how things should be and it makes your painting turn out right in the end. And it's really it's really like how the Lord Jesus is the light of the world as it says in the Bible. He is like that light source. When you have him in focus, when you have him in your life and you follow him, that's how your life is going to turn out the way it's supposed to. Because you're following him, just like that light source in the painting.
And now I'm putting in a little bit more rock into the foreground area. That's just basically because I want to break up the snow a little bit with some more interest. So that's why I'm putting in that rock there. I worked on that one for a little bit just because the rock... You can see the contrast between the shadowed rocks on the left in the blue snow as opposed to um, this one which is just a little closer on the right side of the slope where the sun is hitting it. So the rock had to be a little bit different in color. Um, so I fiddled with that for probably a good, oh boy, 15 minutes I'd say till I got something I liked. And don't feel any... Uh, hesitation with spending a little bit of extra time working on something simple like that it's just because you want it to look right because it's the foreground so I, I kind of got something I liked there a nice little rock pile and we're just about done now also too just because of the lamp that I had on the table over on the right you know that I used to paint by um, it was shining pretty close to the rocks so that's why it looks extra bright um, that's that's also a good thing I think I've brought up before to note when you're painting natural light is always going to be better and that's just because um, if you're painting by artificial light like a lamp um, the colors are going to look a little bit different than if you have that pure natural light to paint by um, I do have that in my studio here. I have some windows. So that's important to think about. When you're painting in natural light, you're going to get the true color. I really like how steep it is on that left side. I want to create a sense of being really high up with grand views and stunning slopes and places where you might not want to go in real life because it's so steep. A few more tweaks on that close-up rock to give it some extra detail because it's the foreground and we're wrapping things up okay I think we're finished with the painting and I think the most important thing to take away from this video is kind of a note on oil paints when I'm painting with oil paints, I'm not afraid usually to try something out to see if I like it. And if I don't like it, which has been the case before, I simply take like a blue shop towel or even a paper towel and I just kind of wipe the paint away and blend it and then, you know, try something else. So it's, it's really nice, in other words, working with oils because the paint remains wet for a long period of time, of course, and so you can really do a lot of changing and tweaking and that's important to note with oil paint because it allows you to be more flexible when you are painting so that's the most important thing other than that i hope to see you next time and god bless you guys merry christmas Thank you.